Hey guys, King Richard was just released in the theaters. And for you guys that don't know, it's a movie about Richard Williams, who is Venus and Serena Williams' dad, possibly the most famous tennis parent of all time. And I just watched this movie last night, and in today's video, I wanna share my thoughts on it. And guys, before we get started, I wanna share my thoughts on tennis movies in general. And I'm talking about blockbuster movies that deal with tennis. For example, Battle of the Sexes, Borg vs. McEnroe, Match Point, Wimbledon, and there's many more movies that have been made. And I did not like any of those movies for the simple reason that the actors couldn't play tennis, which made the movie ridiculous, in my opinion. And look, I understand that it's impossible for actors like Shia LaBeouf, who played McEnroe in Borg vs. McEnroe, to learn to play tennis like McEnroe. Of course, this is gonna be impossible, but it's more than that. See, tennis is such an individual sport where the character of the player is laid out on the court and there's so many unique characteristics that each player had that it's gonna be very difficult for an actor to pick up all those things. So going into this movie, I was expecting to hate it because I really thought that the actresses who were gonna play Venus and Serena were not gonna be able to play tennis and something about that just irks me and I cannot take these movies seriously. However, Sonia Sidney, who played Venus and Demi Singleton, who played Serena, played incredibly well and here's the kicker guys they did not have a tennis background at all they only have been training tennis three and a half months prior to making this movie and in fact Sonia Sidney is a natural lefty and she learned how to play right-handed and I was even able to pick up some unique technical characteristics that Venus and Serena have and these girls were able to mimic these little quirks so in this movie I have to say even though the girls were nowhere near the level of Venus and Serena at that age of course not especially if they haven't played tennis before but whether it was the editing I'm not sure it absolutely passes in my opinion. However, I'm gonna be a little bit critical here. When I saw John Barenthal, who did a great job as Rick Macy, when I saw him feeding balls out of the basket, I did get a little bit turned off to that, but thankfully he didn't feed a lot. Okay, now we got this out of the way. The tennis level in this movie was adequate. I understand this is my own uh, personal thing. People that are not into tennis necessarily don't care whether the actors can play as well as a professional. So now let's talk about this movie, King Richard. Because I am absolutely giving this movie a thumbs up. It is one of the best tennis movies that was ever made. And there was so much attention to detail from the type of rackets the girls were using, from the type of clothes they were using, even what Rick Macy was wearing in this movie. It was so incredibly accurate. And personally, it really put me uh, back in time uh, to the 80s and early 90s and this movie obviously you know the title king richard is about richard williams but it's more so about venus than it was about serena and what i found fascinating about this movie is that part of the reason why serena became so great is because she lived in a little bit of a shadow to venus who was a year older who turned pro first and all the attention was on venus first and i think that's what drove serena to be even better than her sister was. And here's the ironic thing about this movie is that Richard Williams often gets branded as a crazy tennis parent. And as Rick Macy has said in private interviews, Richard Williams is absolutely a world-class dad. And this definitely gets depicted in this movie. By the way, Richard Williams is played by Will Smith, who did a phenomenal job. And from day one, the way he raised these kids, his number one priority, apart from tennis, was education. He really stressed that Venus and Serena got straight A's, but not only that, he also wanted them to be kids. And when Serena didn't feel like playing or when Venus didn't feel like playing, he didn't force them to play. He allowed them to be kids and have a somewhat normal childhood. And what this movie does such a great job at is show Richard Williams as the protector of Venus and Serena. Not only did he protect them when they grew up and trained in Compton, but also once they got better, once they got name recognition, once uh, the attention was on them on potentially being the next number ones in the world. Richard was there to protect them and guide them in the right direction. Now, often tennis dads can be rough with their kids, and this is something that's really difficult to watch. But Richard Williams was the complete opposite. He was so positive with these girls. He was so encouraging 
and motivational. And I personally had the pleasure of meeting Richard Williams in person. I was training this girl and the mom of this girl was really good friends with Richard and she invited Richard to watch some of our practices. And when I talked to Richard and when I saw the way Richard had talked uh, to my player, I can see that this guy was absolutely world class when it came to motivating players. And those few times that I met Richard, not only did he have a really good impact on the player that I was coaching by being motivational, positive, and inspiring, but he also made me feel good. He was giving me compliments that I was a great coach and a great player, and he made me feel really good. And this movie shows all that about Richard, but a few things were missed that I thought could have made the movie even better. And I recommend highly that you watch Rick Macy's interview about King Richard. All you got to do is type in King Richard, Rick Macy, and you're going to find this interview. It's an hour and a half, and I highly recommend that you watch it because Rick Macy shares some incredible stories about Richard. For example, when they were at his academy, Richard Williams used to break beer bottles behind the baseline. He wanted Venus to play closer to the baseline, and that wasn't enough, but he also was behind the court with his car blasting the music, and the purpose of this was so that Venus became mentally tough and wasn't distracted by things coming from the outside. And the broken glass is a little bit crazy, but it just shows the genius that Richard was when it came to coaching these two girls. Now, one thing that surprised me about King Richard was how much attention the coaches got. See, I watched all the other movies about Venus and Serena, and there's many of them, and the coaches never really got any credit. However, in this movie, a lot of coaches got credit. It started with Vic Braden, then a coach who I wasn't familiar with named Cohen, who supposedly coached John McEnroe. And then a big chunk of the movie deals with Rick Macy. So Rick Macy coached Venus and Serena for three and a half years. And he was also the reason why Venus and Serena moved to Florida. And it is absolute truth that sometimes big coaches or big academies will take all the credit for the players that they coach undeservingly so because these players might have gotten developed prior to getting to the academies because let's face it these academies benefit from big name players and they also let these players go to their academies for free and they're already big so they're already developed and then often academies will take credit for these players as if they were the only reason why they get to a certain level once they turn professional. Now look, in the case of Rick Macy, I think the story is completely different because not only did Rick have a huge impact on Serena and Venus's game from a technical standpoint, he also had a huge impact on their lives. He was the sole reason why Venus and Serena and their whole family moved to Florida. Now you guys who are hardcore fans of intuitive tennis will know that my methodology is completely different from Rick Macy's methodology. If you saw a video that I posted a few weeks ago where I talked about a static forehand, meaning that a static position on the forehand will absolutely destroy your continuity, your rhythm, and your power, and your control. This is something that completely opposes what Rick Macy teaches. But here I am calling him a great coach, and I'm saying that he had a huge impact on Serena and Venus's career. Now I can make this argument because tennis is not all about technique. In my opinion, I do feel like Serena and Venus developed somewhat naturally. I think Rick also allowed them to do so and he was able to implement some things that helped them as well. But when it comes to tennis, it's not all about technique. It's also how you motivate player, what kind of environment you set for them. And I feel like when you're talking about motivation, I had the pleasure of being on the court with Rick and he is quite possibly the best motivator I've ever seen on a tennis court. He also is a very charismatic guy and he is an unbelievable communicator, possibly the best communicator in the tennis business when we're talking about coaching. So while my methodology and Rick Macy's methodology are completely opposed to each other, I do think that Rick is an excellent coach. And I do think Rick had a lot to do with Venus and Serena's success. And like I said before, if you want to know even in more detail some of the great stories about Richard and also something that I've never heard before, what happened actually once Venus turned pro, they didn't stay with Rick Macy. And I really highly recommend that you watch Rick Macy's interview. He goes into that. I've never heard that before. The actual story of what happened once they left the academy. Now I'm going to finish off this review of the movie with one thing that I didn't like at all. 
And it's the fact that they made a huge omission in this movie. They didn't mention someone who's a tennis coach who had a huge impact on Venus and Serena, even though he never coached them in person. So in the movie, they acknowledge that Richard learned tennis by reading magazines, by watching videos. And then they show Richard talking to Vic Braden. However, they also show Will Smith, who played Richard Williams, repeatedly yelling at Venus and Serena, open stance, open stance, open stance. This is shown in several segments of the movie, even prior to them going to Rick Macy. So who was the coach that first introduced open stance. It wasn't Vic Braden who was showed in the movie, it was Oscar Wagner. And in fact, it makes absolute sense because Richard learned about the tennis game through watching movies and reading books. And it is absolute fact that Richard was watching one of Oscar Wagner's tapes. And for you guys that don't know Oscar Wagner, he is the pioneer of teaching modern tennis. And what is modern tennis? Well, it's played open stance, especially when we're talking about forehands. And I feel like this was a huge omission in the movie. They definitely should have mentioned Oscar Wagner because the reason why Venus and Serena play so much open stance, not only in the forehand, but also in the back end, is a direct result of Richard William watching Oscar Wagner videotapes. So there it is, guys. It's my review of King Richard. I've definitely given it a thumbs up and also, I'm going to mention a couple of other tennis movies that I do like. It's not like I hate every single uh, tennis movie that's out there. But these other two are documentaries. And actually, it's Venus and Serena, the documentary. It's a fantastic documentary. Many insights on Venus and Serena's lives. But also, Love Means Zero. It's a documentary about Nick Pelletieri, which is absolutely phenomenal. So the top three, or let's say the only three movies that I like, are King Richard, Venus and Serena, and love means zero. Now for you hardcore intuitive tennis fans, you're gonna notice something in this movie that is completely opposed to my teaching methodology. And Richard Williams had Venus and Serena back in Compton throw rackets over the fence on the other side of the court. And I've got a video coming out on Tuesday that deals with this exact topic. My methodology does not approve of throwing rackets because in my methodology, I was able to establish that a serving motion is nothing like a throwing motion. So if I was gonna have any beef with technical details from this movie, it was that Richard had the girls throwing rackets, but it's not only that, you will also hear in the movie that Richard was yelling out pronation to the kids. I don't know if this is really true, whether Richard really said this, but he definitely had the girls throwing rackets. So for you guys that watch this movie, I'm sure you're gonna hit me in the comments with what about Richard having them throw rackets, what about Richard yelling pronation? In my methodology, you do not need to throw rackets to serve better, and you do not need to consciously think about pronation to serve better either. So in my opinion, it didn't help Serena and Venus to throw rackets, but it didn't necessarily hurt them either.